Hey, we're here in Maryland with Brian. Brian, thanks for having us up. Absolutely, Grant. Uh, Brian has a lot of what I call brown deer, sick of deer on here, and some white tails too. Want to make better habitat. I'd studied the maps as always before I got up here, flew up last night, and it was a closed canopy. You agree, closed canopy? Yes, it is. But when we kind of move around and look, there's a real obvious browse line. The only place we don't see a browse line is under some of the big pine trees where it's just, there's nice shrubs to be a browse line on. I mean, there's just not groceries here. Right. So Brian and I have been talking about hack and squirt, logging, all the options. And I want to tell you all at home that that is messy. Skidders can leave ruts. They're going to scar up some of the residual trees. There's no way to log without creating a mess. There's no way Brian's going to sit here on this land and it magically get better without taking some pretty drastic steps. Right. We can create some ideal food plots or even larger food plots and deer are going to come there. Brian's a very successful hunter, seeing a lot of deer already because they're just passing through the land. Uh, but that's not going to solve it. We need a, ideally a total habitat makeover, but there's some dangers here because if we just cut these sweet gums, they're gonna sprout back like crazy. If we log sweet gums, they're gonna sprout back like crazy. So kind of talking about hack and squirt, girdle to spray for some of the sweet gums. And we're gonna give you more throughout the day. This property's spongy, can be a little wet in some areas, so there's some, some concerns there. Yep. Uh, but this is another, we're in Maryland, uh, closed campy forest that we need to do some pretty intensive habitat work to make deer wanna spend more time on here than just coming for a food plot or a feeder. That's my goal. This is like the best example of a biological desert. Now someone cut pines out here long ago and they were allowed to volunteer. And there's a pine every, I don't know, two, three, four feet can over yard. There is nothing on the ground. I, I mean, there's like 99.9% .9 brown needles, almost no green. Deer may bed in here because no one's hunting in here. No one's going through here. So it's a sanctuary against two-legged hunters, but not against coyotes or bobcats. So you can go up, I mean, no sun, nothing green. Not even a sweet gum growing down there. Um, biological desert, don't let this happen to your land. If you clear cut pines and you don't have a follow-up treatment, you're gonna get this. Brian, you tell me what you did right here. So we had uh, a mulching crew come in here last summer and work for about a week, just taking out everything under, let's say, a foot uh, diameter. Uh -huh. And so this is not quite one year later. Okay. And it created what I like to call a nice park-like setting. And this will get good over time. But when you put this much mulch or wood or stuff that bacteria want to break down on the ground, they physically are taking the nutrients out of soil to do that. Those bacteria got nutrients. And that's why I'm not getting much plant growth in here. I mean, two things, the mulch is physically shading out the ground and it's really tying up nutrients. So I get this question, I'm gonna say daily, Lily, can I use a mulcher? Yes, you can, but there's no magic spoon in the drawer. And this is one of the trade-offs of mulching is that you're gonna set stuff back two, three, four years, depending on where you are, how humid it is, how quick stuff breaks down. And when you mulch hardwoods, it almost never kills them, they sprout back. I mean, almost never. Pine trees, of course, they're dead, but, you know, I go there and I see some over there and right here. When you mulch, you're gonna get sprout. You're not killing that root system. You're top killing. Uh, and so that's why, like, if you fell a tree in your yard, a hardwood tree with chainsaw, you just sprout back, let's use some herbicide or something. That's the same thing with mulching. So um, this is not bad or good. These are just options and trade-offs. Walk around Brian's property and they'd worked on, just, just starting to work on, I should say, make some bedding areas, sticking stuff up. Great idea of what I would have prescribed. And they girdled, but they got all these sprouts coming out the base of the tree. This is a maple, you can see the maple leaves, they're heavily browsed. But your intention was to kill this, right? Yes, it was. And it's not dead. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking questions. Gotta be polite when you're out there doing these things, folks. So. But they use Roundup or glyphosate. Well, glyphosate doesn't kill a lot of trees. It top killed or set this back a good bit, wounded it a right. lot. But it's not dead. If you let that grow, 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 it's gonna be a mess, right? You got a, yep. I don't know, 50 or 100 stems coming off there. At some time they get where they don't taste well and deer won't eat them, it'll get real tall and bushy. You can't see through there, you can't shoot through with the bow, whatever. So if we're gonna do this work, you, you know, a lot of labor, we're gonna use what a lot of people call it a Harper, Craig Harper. 
uh, mixture. We're gonna use 50% Garlon 3A, not 4A, 3A, 40% water, and 10% Arsenal AC. The generics, those work fine. You can buy them online. You mix the Garlon and water first. If you mix Garlon and Arsenal, it'll kind of gel up, be unusable, basically. So, some good thoughts here. We're gonna walk around more and show you. There's some hinge cutting, too. You know I'm loving getting there. But, um, this was good work, but we're gonna use a different herbicide and maybe change some techniques a little bit as we go on through and work keep you posted. Maple, double girdled, treated with Roundup or glyphosate. Double girdled, big wound to the tree. And when we look up a second, it's pretty much top dead. There's not much green up there. But we're getting all these stump sprouts. And when you use the recipe, I often talk about Garlon 3A water and Amazapir or Arsenal AC. You don't see this, the tree's dead, dead. No, a lot of deer on this property and they're browsing the heck out of this. Those sprouts on this maple may not get out of control. If this would have been a beech or a sweet gum, something deer don't want to browse on, man, it could be five or six feet tall in a couple years because now you got a 20, 30, 40 year old root system feeding a couple of pounds versus a couple of tons. So be cautious about what you do when you do these or you could have six foot tall, thousands of stump sprouts out here and you can't see through and they will shade out everything below and you end up with another desert so when you're doing these things make sure you're using the right herbicide and the right technique and you get the results you want